Hello. In this video, I want to discuss the basic concepts surrounding vector functions. Now, let's first uh, look at the motivation. So, the motivation for us comes from curves. Right? Now, if we have a function, say from R into R, then we can look at its graph, right? And its graph is typically some kind of curve like that, right? So here we have the graph, y is f of x. Now, for many ap applications, this is simply not good enough, right? If you see one example, let's look at this bug we've got here on the screen. Now, it's creepy, but don't swat at it. Let's look at what it does for a minute. Right, it's going to crawl around here on the screen, doing something like that. Right, so here it goes, right, moving around on the screen. Now, no matter how you draw your x and your y axes, say like that, you'll agree that this curve, the path of the bug, is not a graph of a function. Remember, so for instance, we can't write this as y is f of x. Right? Because remember, for the graph of a function, if you take any x value, right, there's just supposed to be one corresponding y value. And here, if we take that as our x, then we see we go this line is going to cut the curve in three points. So for that x value, We've got three different y values. So this can't be the graph of a function, right? So we need a different way of representing this curve mathematically. Right? And that is where vector functions come in. So what is a vector function? Well, let's take, for the sake of simplicity, an interval i in the real line. Now, a vector function on this interval is a function r from i into r2, right? And in this case, we have a two-dimensional vector function. Or it's a function r from i into r3. And in this case, we have a three-dimensional vector function. Right? Now, the reason why we call this a vector function, right, if we look at the 3D case, for instance, then r of t is an element of R3, in other words, a vector, right? So the values of the function are vectors, either in R2 or in R3, and that is why we call this a vector function. Now, what's going on here? Let's say, just so the picture is easier to draw, that we have a two-dimensional vector function, right? So the values of R sit in R3. Right. So here we've got the real line, right? and here we've got the interval i. Right. So this is the domain of our vector function. Right. So if you take a t here, it's going to send t, our function r is going to send t to something here in r2. r of t is in r2. Now, there are two ways of interpreting R of T. Right? So, we could either think of, of R of T as the point here. Right? So, there will be its X coordinate. There will be its Y coordinate. So, either we can think of this as a point. A point in the plane, or instead of thinking of this as a point in the plane, we can think of this as an arrow, right? So we can think of this, for instance, as the arrow starting here at the origin, at zero, and ending there. So you can think of it as an arrow or a geometric vector.
and which interpretation you use depends on the circumstances. Right? So if your R of T is supposed to say give the position of the, of the bug crawling on the screen, then thinking of it as a point makes sense. Right? So if your vector function describes the position of something, then it makes sense to think of it as a point. However, if your vector function describes velocity, then it may be may be convenient to think of this as an arrow or a or a geometric vector. Right. Now, if we look at our picture here, right, then with each value r of t for our vector function, we can associate two real numbers, right? The x component and the y component at t, right? So in other words, we can write this r of t as x of t, y of t. Right? And that brings us to what we call the components of our vector function. Right? So if we have a two-dimensional vector function, we can write each r of t in vector form as an x of t, y of t. And this is for t, an element of i. So we get from the vector function, the two-dimensional vector function, we get a real valued function x from i into r and a real valued function y from i into r. Right? And these, these two functions we call the component functions for the vector function. Right? So at each t we simply say, well, what is the x component of r of t? And that gives us our first component function. And we say, well, what is the y component of r of t? That gives us our, y fun our, our second component function. Right? And in exactly the same way, if we have a three-dimensional vector function and we write out the vector x of t, y of t, z of t, right? then we get three real-valued functions. Oh, so now we have an x from i into r, a y from i into r, and a z from i into r. Right? We have our three component functions. So let's look at a, a short little example. Right, here we've got a vector function. r of t is First component, root 1 minus t. Second component, t squared. Third component, lin t. Right, so what are our component functions? Well, our component function, first component function, x of t, is root 1 minus t. Right, and this is defined for 1 minus t bigger than 0. So in other words, only when t is less than or equal to 1. Our second component function, y of t, is t squared. And this is, of course, defined for every real number t. And our third component function, z of t, is lin t. And this is defined only for t bigger than 0. Right. So, our vector function, r, as domain... Right? 0, 1. Right? Because remember, for the vector function to be defined, we need to look at all three, the component functions. Right? For the first component, we need t less than or equal to 1. For the second component, t can be anything. For the third component, t must be bigger than 0. Right? So, our vector function here is defined for t bigger than 0, less than or equal to 1.